So we begin the first discussion of the program today, and that's about the sack of the Ebony State Governor Dave Omahi, as well as his deputy Eric Igwe, the Speaker, and other members of the State House of Assembly. This was uh, declared by a federal high court uh, over their defection to the All Progressives Congress, the APC. And this situation now brings to the fore the Sitchite syndrome among politicians. But make no mistake about the fact that the governor and the others affected by the Tuesday judgment have uh, rights of appeal claims that uh, it was purchased to favor the People's Democratic Party and embarrass the APC. Now, this may beg the question, but Governor Mahi, who declared that he is still in charge, has vowed to appeal the judgment. Meanwhile, the PDP has nominated Idumai Gariwe and Fred Udogu as replacements, sending their names to the Independent National Electoral Commission to declare them as governor and deputy governor of the South East State instead. And that's how we begin discussions today. Uh, Makshid Jamio, not only did Governor Omahi uh, reject outrightly the decision of uh, Justice Enyang, uh, or in that Tuesday decision, he has even gone on to petition him to the NJC cited judicial rascality and that in itself has also you know drew the eye of the nba you know slamming the government's uh, words describing it as harsh and uncalled for let's begin from from that uh, twist now how do you see yesterday's happenings with the updates of today um the governor uh, governor uh, dave omai went too far uh in his um uh, comments uh, because um well, the, the judgment was not favorable to him, but then the comments, I mean, uh, alleging that uh, the judge, I mean, had, uh, had a, a, a pre-position, I mean, that they had anticipated that he would take that decision to embarrass the APC and the federal government, insinuating that the judge is biased. I mean, I think it's very wrong. Um, <laughs> the, 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 the judge is not saying you should vacate your your position. You still have uh, rooms for the appellate court and the Supreme Court to seek uh, redress. So instead of ventilating your anger, I mean, on the judge for the decision which uh, he has taken, I mean, uh, you could have just proceeded to do what he eventually did today Absolutely. by going to the uh, appeal court. That does not, however, mean that the ruling was a good ruling i mean especially given uh several instances from the past um you see the the, the judge relied on uh, the, the amici uh, case and that of INEC versus Faleke to come to a conclusion but then that has since have been i mean it's no longer position of the law i mean uh, the real position of the law these days is that of article versus um or and particular and others uh, versus uh, Attorney, General Attorney General of the Federation Federation. in 2007, where the Supreme Court averred that he can actually contest on the platform, he can defect to any party, especially bearing in mind that um, this, uh, uh, the, this the, pip, the person involved here, the, 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 the dramatic person, the governor, the deputy, has uh, immunity under Section 109 of the Constitution against criminal and civil proceedings. So let me compare um, uh, Mr. Mojit Jamu's uh, assessment now with yours. Uh, how much of um, you know, valid grounds does Governor Umahi and his deputy have uh, for appeal now that they've gone on uh, upstairs, they've gone on to the Court of Appeal? Well, um, I'm not a lawyer, but um, from the little we have read and um, seen in the past, very valid ground, solid. But the big question to ask ourselves is how tolerant are our politicians to opposition? Because that's what this is all about. Like he said, the Supreme Court has ruled in the case of Atiku Abubakar leaving the People's Democratic Party for the Action Congress. Mm -hmm. Very clearly, in that judgment by Justice Walter Onogin, he says, 
there is nowhere in the 1999 constitution that it is stated that the president or vice president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria shall be removed or is removable from that office if he defects from the political platform he was elected to that office and joins another political party. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very clear. But then there is also what we must consider. What were the things put forward before justice in Yangeko? For him to have arrived at that conclusion, were these positions properly argued? What were the things that came into play? Because it's what you present in particular instances before the court that the court will rely on. If you go there and your case is not properly well presented. presented because you feel that there is already a judgment that favors you, you are not likely to come out unscathed. But then for me, that is not even the meat of the matter. It is the reaction of the governor that is the meat of the matter. Here is somebody who wants to become the president. Absolutely. Lambasting the judiciary this way over one judgment that wasn't in his favor. So what does he do when he becomes president? In that state, he has been labeled as being autocratic, not willing to listen to other people's views. When you watch it, he's one of the governors with the highest turnover of assistance. It's, it's just hires, he fires, and when he feels like they have begged me enough, he brings them back. If he doesn't want to bring them back, he leaves them to go. That is not a good virtue of a leader. You've got to be able to listen, be sober, especially in moments of anger. Really at a time when you need to react to issues such as this. I mean, what? He went overboard yesterday. And that's why I, I, I won't fault the Nigerian Bar Association describing what he did as um, as a uh, as a um, uh, There were words of uh, being authoritarian you know, and, it, it, it says, and even asking him to, to, to it, retract it, 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 it is an apology. It's the of the highest Absolutely. order. Yeah. And indeed, executive rascality taken too far. Indeed. And I support it. Because you know that you have a room to appeal. Mm -hmm. It's your right. That's what you should have done yesterday instead of talking to the media. What you needed to have done would have been, we're already in court, or we are going to appeal this judgment. Not for you to go on and begin to lambast the judiciary. You should know that there are three arms of government, the executive, the legislature, and judiciary. If you're able to control the legislature in your state, then don't try to control the judiciary at the federal level. Even if you're able to control the judiciary in your own state, we shouldn't see you as somebody who wants to run the executive, ride rough shot over the, the legislature, and then pocket the judiciary. That shouldn't be. That's not the kind of president we are looking forward to. Another concern uh, from, you know, the feedback of what Governor Omahi also said in, uh, you know, the sharp reaction to uh, Tuesday's judgment. Another concern was how his stance at that time would also sit among his supporters that th this might also be uh, a, a call for anarchy and we did see how the APC in the state also you know I guess tried to 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 lessen the impact of the governor's uh, statement yesterday but uh, looking at that now and the fact that yes indeed he has declared his intention to run as president uh, do, do you think uh, you know this might actually affect his chances yeah, well, in uh, Nigeria, anything happens, so to, so they say, and um, uh, we forget things uh, quite of often. And um, I, I don't think um, if he it will act, affect his uh, chances. That's if he has any anyway. The convention, I mean, the um, the uh, chairmanship of uh, the or rather the candidates uh, for presidential uh, elections will emerge by June third. I mean, we have. Um, 
less than three months to see how Umai uh, canvasses for votes and uh, wins uh, the hearts of the uh, delegates uh, with that kind of attitude. But uh, having said that, um, looking at that judgment now, uh, I think uh, our judiciary should, um, I mean, harmonize positions. I mean, there was a similar case in Sanfara where a Sanfara High Court said it lacks jurisdiction in handling situations like that. APC won Sanfara through the uh, electoral process. The court ruled in favor of um, PDP. So from House of Assembly up to National Assembly level, they went, I mean, uh, it, it turned PDP. Now, the PDP governor in Sanfara, Matawali, defected to uh, uh, APC with the exception of uh, the deputy who was later impeached. Now, I mean, the, the party uh, PDP went to call that, no guy, you cannot defect to uh, APC, but they lost. Now, Umahi should have taken a hint from that rather than that uh, uh, going for that outburst on the judiciary, especially given the fact that you know even laymen know that the procedure, uh, the proceedings, the court proceedings from the appellate to the Supreme Court will take more than a year. You have almost like a year left to to serve. Mm -hmm. It's not likely that you'll be removed, even if it gets to the Supreme Court before in the next uh, in the next one year, so to say. Now. Apart from that, is the fact that, just like Dotun said, I mean, you don't rely on past judgments. You should argue your case. It's lawyers who has, were hanging their case on the fact that the governor and deputy has immunity. No, it goes beyond that. You are quoting section 109 of the Constitution. We are at section uh, 68. I mean, I mean, I gave very clear uh, 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 directives on how lawmakers, both at the national and the state assemblies, could be removed when they cross carpet, when they change from one political party to the other. But then the constitution, I mean, was a bit silent on specifically on the pre on president, that of president, president and vice president, president and governor governors, and, and deputies. Mm -hmm. I mean, and you see, our our judiciary, our law keeps evolving, mm -hmm. just like the uh, Faleke case threw us into. A state of confusion. Okay. I mean, it had. I mean, it, okay. it took senior lawyers. Mr. Jeremy, to let me let me interrupt you. We have a first caller, Charles. Welcome to the program. Please uh, join in the conversation. Good evening. Good evening. Good Carry on, please. Uh, please, my name is Charles. I'm calling from Lagos, specifically in Mushi local government. That's great. Carry on, please. Um, I'm 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 not fine. Um, I'm from a boy. <laughs> Hello, can you hear me? Carry on. Yes, you're live. I'm from my boy, and uh, I can see what is happening for my governor now. Uh, I am not happy. What I just want to comment is that I want to appeal to our father, that is the President uh, Mohammed Buhari, to try to do what he can do because this is a miscarriage of justice. How can they remove a sitting governor because they have conspired against him with his deputy? All right, uh, Mr. Charles, thank you so much for your feedback. Uh, if you've been following the program, uh, the governor and every other uh, person who may be aggrieved by that decision, of course, have channels, uh, further channels to air their grievances uh, and await a final verdict on the matter. And the last is obviously not not heard, uh, not yet heard on on this issue. Uh, but. Uh, Looking at the action of the PDP now, you know, coming in uh, into this uh, this controversy, bringing out the names of uh, of their replacements, <laughs> and they say that okay, they don't know or they don't care whether the parties concerned may have appealed. For theirs is just to see that the words or the judgment of uh, Justice Eko yesterday are uh, obeyed to the letter. It's it's the right of the party. What they have done, clearly because. If 
you don't explore and exploit every opportunity that you have, you're going to lose out. It is not impossible that there will be loopholes here and there. There have been situations where the Independent National Electoral Commission had taken some decisions based on the fact that, see, you have brought your case here, and this case appears valid. If, for instance, while that judgment is in abeyance, has not gone, the governor has not gone on, a, on appeal, the judgment from the Federal High Court goes to INEC, and it doesn't have the appeal from the governor, and waits for the maximum time to do so, and it doesn't come. It is saying the PDP candidates. Absolutely. So it's a, it's a matter of playing your cards well. It's what we call try your luck. <laughs> so that's what PDP has done. It's not nothing out All of right. place. So, so it's in order. It's in it, order. Indeed. All right, gentlemen, we'll order. suspend our conversation on this uh, issue for now. This full of separation of powers predisposes that the three arms of government, that's the executive, legislature, and the judiciary, perform their duties independently. Now, the Senate is asserting its independence regarding the amendments to the Electoral Act, which was signed by President Muhammadu Buhari on February the 25th, and not even a ruling by the Federal High Court in Abuja could stop the upper legislative chamber from deliberating on the issue. The Senate has now thrown out the request by President Buhari for an amendment of Section 84, subsection 12 of the Electoral Act, and which this provision pre prevents appointed political office holders from contesting for elections from party primary level without resigning. And the request was rejected after a debate for the second reading of the bill occurred on Wednesday. The senators kicked against it and voted no when it was put to voice votes by the Senate President, Senator Ahmed Lawan. Let's hear from them. Those in favor that this bill be now read a second time. Say aye. aye. Those again say nay. Nee. Yeah. No, I'm not putting the question again because I put it. I put the question. There was an I and there were nays. And I said the nays had it. Senate President Te Ahmed Lawan, they leading the session where voice votes uh, were cast and uh, the overall uh, voices uh, pandered no, uh, you know, and that uh, more or less, you know, brings an end to the, uh, well, the president's uh, amendment desire of the Electoral Act. Mojit Jamio, how do you view uh, this, this occurrence? And yes, we are seeing three arms of government. Uh, the judiciary had initially had a say on this when the matter was put before it. You know, um, an order was delivered also by the same Justice Echo. The executive had already brought this bill forward. The legislature has now had its say. What does this all mean to you? I, I see that as uh, the beauty of uh, democracy. What actually um, uh, Section 84, uh, uh, Chapter 12 of uh, the Constitution says is that uh, uh, no political appointee at any level shall be a voting delegate or be voted for at uh, the convention of political parties or at the uh, at, um, I mean uh, or for the nomination of um, um, the process of candidates and also it's talked about the issue I mean which you mentioned which is uh, that they should resign as uh, um, political appointees 30 days before, before the they election. can contest for an election. So, you know, there are two issues in one. And uh, the two issues have been a subject uh, of debate, and a lot of people have gone to court. Uh, a lot of aspirants and candidates have gone to court to challenge this. Now, there's a difference between standing for election and being appointed. 
And when you stand for election, it, you go through a rigorous process. And that's why governors, uh, legislators can run for an election and still re retain their position even when they lose. Uh, I mean, a clear example is that of Faleke. He was in the House of Reps when he went to um, uh, Kogi to um, contest as a, a deputy uh, governorship candidate. I wanted to become governor. He lost in the process for the two and came back to reps. But in the case of political appointees, maybe like ministers and uh, maybe executive secretaries and other appoint appointment positions, not elective posts, they have to resign. And if they resign from source positions and they go to contest for election and they lose, it is not guaranteed that they can come back there. So the legislators, I mean, the, the, the senators are saying that we were elected, we campaigned, and we, I mean, that's why we have that uh, right of first refusal. That's why we have that advantage of being able to stand for an election, even while still occupying our position, and that political appointees don't have such powers. And now, it is actually the governors that are pushing. There has been a, a mild drama between Absolutely. between governors and and the, lawmakers. and the lawmakers because lawmakers, I mean the law. I mean uh, in the political parties, the lawmakers they also have their own aides, legislative aides, PAs, and, and what have you. They cannot vote or be voted for or nominate candidates during conventions. But the governors and probably the president, I mean we have governors who have like one thousand essays. So if the political appointees are allowed to vote at convention. It, it means that he has an advantage. That'd be an issue. He will have 1,000 of his aides, Plus including commissioners mm -hmm. and also, and statutory delegates yes. to vote mm. during elections. So that's why the governors lobbied the president to ensure that that clause, that clause is removed. expunged mm -hmm. from the constitution. But the lawmakers, I mean, they are battle ready. That's why they are even sponsoring one of them to become chairman. Um, uh, of uh, of the party uh, of APC at uh, their oncoming uh, convention, so it's it's, it's, it's all about interest. It's all about interest. Let's hear from from Mr. Dosu. What, what's it uh, for you? Uh, and okay, <laughs> you, if I may further, you know, add that you know the the judiciary um, early in the month or, or thereabout when the this bill was presented before it seeking an order had said that no one neither the president the executive or uh, the lawmakers you know have any rights to 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 alter it and we saw senator lawan going on mm, well it, it, on it's it. it's a settled matter that the judiciary has a right to debate and take decision on any matter before it it's settled just like what we discussed about removing a governor is deputy president or vice president mm -hmm. from power. It is settled. And the National Assembly is also saying they also have a right to deliberate on bills for the welfare of yes, all Nigerians. that's why it is settled. Mm, right. You don't, the court can't stop. It's, 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 it's been uh, there over the years. There have been this controversy of don't debate this, don't debate that, but it's a settled matter. The, when, the, when the thing comes into force now, you can then go and try it out again in the court and say this decision was taken while this was subsisting and see let's see how the court will then rule because the legislature has a right to debate any issue and take a decision whatever the judiciary feels because that is its own mandate mm. that's why we empower them as nigerians to take that decision. What the legislature couldn't get initially mm. in pushing that governors, sh governors, the powers of governors should be whittled in terms of party primaries, convention, and all the rest. They have it now, even if it is not total. Because a governor, for instance, can promise all his appointees, resign, go for this. If we, when we finish, come back, I accept you back. There can be an understanding. But we shouldn't forget 
that this is politics in Nigeria. Right. Anything can happen in that process. Mm -hmm. People can be wooed away from the governors. They can lose the election. Anything can happen. So that is the beauty of this, that there is a reduction in the powers of the president and the governors to determine delegates to primaries and to convention. Well, Mojid, uh, if you look at how the Senate is acting now vis-a-vis uh, -vis concerns that um, the Senate and the House are seeing themselves more like an appendage or a rubber stamp of, of the executive, with, with this now, does this give us uh, you know, hope that indeed the Senate, the lawmakers generally, are you know, asserting their independence? Well, how I wish, I believe so. But then, like I said earlier, uh, this is a matter that concerns them. And because we are actually approaching um, critical uh, primaries for the, the major political parties, and that's why it's actually the PDP that went to court to challenge uh, this clause uh, uh, that, that it should be expunged uh, from the... Um, uh, amended uh, electoral act and uh, uh, you know but the governors lobbied the, uh, the the president but you know the president has nothing at stake he's not running again so he just sent it to the, uh, the senate uh, to the national assembly well guys if you want to consider this you can do so I mean, it's not as if the uh, president really has anything has to any, gain. anything to gain or lose i mean if it were issues that he has interest in he knows how to do it in such a way that the senate would uh, even still uh, approve it but then uh, let's give kudos to the uh, lawmakers at least for once i mean they are trying to strike a balance and uh, detach uh, themselves from being an appendage of uh, the uh, uh, executive arm of government but of, i mean in the uh, recent past especially this uh, 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 National Assembly, they have been supportive of the quote unquote supportive of uh, the uh, regime of uh, uh, Buhari, unlike uh, what we had uh, in the first uh, term under, under Saraki uh, led as, as said it. And uh, I mean, it's been a very robust uh, deliberation, uh, especially on this electoral act. And for them to actually take the initiative to say no, or, I mean, on, on this issue of uh, the political appointees and their resignation and their participation in party primaries and nominations, I think uh, we should give them kudos. All right. What, what, what will be your parting shot on, on this issue, especially uh, with the, the desire is still, you know, uh, you know, for the greater good, uh, you know, for society as all these um, constitutional exercises are brought before the lawmakers. Uh, indeed, even though there may be personal interest at play here, uh, where does this all lead, leave the society indeed? Well, it, it doesn't leave the, we the so-called masses any good. Because what we have seen always will be the interests of the political players at play. That's what they do to us. Because if you ask me, like I've always said on this program, what I want will be a situation where we can return party politics to the era when your voice, my voice, will count. Now we don't have a say. Because my one naira will not mean anything to a political party. Some people are dictating their, and they, they, like they say, who plays, who, who plays the piper, who will dictate the tune. It's the man who is paying. Who is, so what we want is for us to return to that era where political parties belong to the masses. Where we are the ones who will decide who becomes the chairman. Now, APC is going to its convention. We are hearing that the chairman has been decided by the president. That isn't good for the political party. We are hearing they have zoned everything and then they have reached a consensus. Meaning that if I'm a member of APC, my voice doesn't count. I don't have a say in who becomes the chairman, in who becomes the candidate for any elective position. Some people would have sat down somewhere, 
taking a decision and said this is the direction in which we are heading. The only time you are going to hear the voices of others, like it's happening now in um, governorship primaries in some states, mm -hmm. is when they disagree. Is when one person feels I'm aggrieved. Mm -hmm. you hear but once they agree, All right. we are good to go. All right. Okay. We'll, uh, we'll wait and see and compare your predictions uh, eventually. It's indeed not the best of time for the Nigerian army, who while battling with security threats across the length and breadth of the country, it also has to contend with abuses by its men. Now the Chief of Civil Military Affairs Major General Marcus Koge says the Nigerian army received and treated more than 500 complaints about human rights violations across the country between uh, 2016 and 2022. Well, up to this moment, that is. Major General Kange says all the complaints have been investigated while appropriate sanctions recommended for those found culpable. How does this sit with you, uh, Major Jamion? Yeah, it's as, I think it has. It's talking about um, uh, the abuse of uh, office by some of the uh, military officers, like we had in the case of um, uh, that captain who actually uh, stood in the way of the law uh, to uh, release um, that uh, notorious uh, 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 kid yeah, uh, yeah, mm. notorious mm. kidnapper mm. Uh, in the in the north that was uh, incidentally arrested by uh, uh, Abakiari and his uh, team. I mean, uh, so th those are uh, such cases, and uh, some also some instances where uh, some of these uh, uh, military uh, personnel would um, inflict uh, pains on harmless civilians and uh, uh, whereas some of these cases and, and even against uh, other uh, military and paramilitary uh, mm -hmm. agencies mm -hmm. where you see conflict between uh, the military and the police, mm -hmm. uh, military and um, uh, civil defense, immigration mm -hmm. personnel and so and, and, and such I mean uh, and such so these are the kind of uh, uh, cases that they are talking about. Also I think we have some uh, uh, levied against them by the Amnesty International. So uh, I mean, in their handling of uh, uh, Boko Haram uh, uh, suspects and insurgents and what have you. But in those ones, I don't think I want to blame uh, the, the, the military because uh, um, <laughs> when some of these characters, uh, the, some of the uh, insurgents and uh, bandits are using unconventional uh, war tools against uh, the military. I mean, you don't expect them to uh, sit and fold uh, their arms. But by and large, I think, uh, like uh, the, uh, the general said, there has been a reduction in uh, these uh, cases of um, uh, abuse uh, that are being reported uh, since uh, they have constantly been training and sensitizing their men against uh, such, especially. Uh, as it concerns the civil populace. But if I would compare, you know, y yours, your assessment with what uh, the army is now saying, there has indeed been a reduction in litigation of cases. There, there's not much on the ground now to establish, you know, the veracity of the, the army's claims. Or what do you think? I, I, I think if um, we're talking of um, over six years, my conclusion very easily is that it is because Nigerians do not know or have decided not to pursue these cases. They don't know how to pursue it or do not know. Because if you are talking of 506 years, I can assure you that even today you would have had more than 100 across the country. Because things have changed. I must agree. When you look at the trainings that have gone on and all the rest, things have changed. But have they changed to the extent that in six years we are going to have only 500 cases of abuse? I say no. And I will say that is because people do not know, really, that there are avenues for this. For instance, even as someone who deals with the military, if you ask me now that what is the short code for the telephone number created 
by the civil military and this is, and this legal is, desk. That is the crux of, of this agency or this arm. To report. Mm. I can't even, I can't say it. So a lot of Nigerians won't even know that there is a short code, 193, where you can report. So I praise the military for this. I'm, I, and I must say that is really from the bottom of my heart, if that expression is permitted, that there has been this um, effort which has yielded very serious results. But it is still not enough. We still need to work more on the operatives, especially the men. At the level of the officers, you hardly find so because they, even before getting into the military, they are already mature, they are stable, and all the rest. But all these younger ones, or well, most of these younger ones, they are yet to get stable. And that is why you see that even under this... Um, under this department, you have psychologists, sociologists, and all the rest who are dealing with cases brought against the men so that they can stabilize them in terms of behavior, maturity, comportment, and all the rest. But I think what we need to promote as the media is to let Nigerians know that there is an avenue that even where you are, it's because it's a 24-hour call center. Even while you are being abused, it's just one phone call away. One night three. I would like to take you. We need that. Right, right. Um, um, in, interesting point. I, I also like to take uh, you know Majid on on that as well, especially when I also remember that uh, the this um, department, the civil military affairs, also said that uh, a su substantial amount of this more than five hundred complaints, you know, weren't substantiated. It said it checked all of them. Some were finalized. Some officers were found to have. Ed, indeed, but then there was a chunk, we don't know how many, that, you know, had to be dismissed, uh, be, perhaps due to want of, of evidence and, and all that. When you compare that with the suggestion that there may be a lacuna in the level of communication between the uh, military and uh, the civilians, uh, where, does, where do you think we can, you know, meet somewhere? Yeah, you know, um, the office of the uh, Chief of Civil Military um, Affairs is uh, in Abuja and where a complainant comes from Ibokoda or Akure for example and they said it should come with evidence to Abuja to come and uh, uh, present his evidence. Just like the case of um, uh, the man that was killed uh, uh, in, that was murdered in uh, Ileife and you are taking the case to Abuja before the uh, Falano came in. I mean, see, there's, there, there are some attempts that frustrate people. Uh, I mean, at from my initial, this is a family that has little or no money to even prosecute this case. Now you want them to be looking for transport money. So I'm just using uh, that indeed, like indeed. as an example where uh, you have to take your evidence to Abuja and uh, and at the end of the day, what do you get? Are you going to get your transport money back or they, uh, they, 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 they will com compensate you uh, in re uh, uh, relative to the abuse you received at the end of the day? And this, this, is a, this is a case that might take up to six months. So if they fast track and decentralize um, the process, probably have it in uh, all the states where they have barracks and not just... Uh, having that uh, uh, center in Abuja. I mean, the final decision could be taken in Abuja, but they should be able to tackle some of these cases at the uh, level of... Uh, them. By Indeed. decentralizing. Indeed. So that more people can okay. be aware. And they should also uh, give more uh, 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 publicity and uh, uh, information to the short code, which I don't mention that. Fair enough. Yeah. And we have another caller. Chris from Lagos. Welcome. Carry on, please. Hi. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome. Okay, thank you. I want to um, comment on this uh, issue of the Nigerian Army probe of 500 uh, petitions. Uh, first, let me um, thank the gentleman on your left, you know, for his comment. And um, I also want to say that um, civilians generally, if they have complaints, you know, they should 
try as much as they can to say it the way it is because the army in general is a very big organization so it is not every term big and hurry that just comes up with issues and you expect the army to handle mm -hmm. and there should be proper comportment as well because the channel of communication just as we know has to get to the appropriate authority and at the right time and if this is not done of course, whoever that is going to investigate will find it difficult to get all the instruments, all the information, all, right. all the materials that they require to, you know, sort whoever that is affected out. All right. The very big organization. So for us, it is important that we say it and we try as much as we can to say the truth. Thank you all very right. Thank much. Thank you very much, Thank uh, you. Chris. Thank you so much. Dr. How do you how do you view this? Uh, there's still a lot to contend with elsewhere, and now in the north um, western region, Kebbi State is also you know wit witnessing worrisome bloodbaths. Well, like um, we've noted on this program, what those who are carrying out this attack, what they do is once they are aware of the movement of troops in a particular direction. They change the battleground to another state. Before, we had Kaduna boiling virtually every day. They moved in troops. They changed. Mm -hmm. Went on to Zamfara, Sokoto Axis. Sometimes, they were then going into Katsina. At some point, they abandoned the Zamfara took to Aziz and went into Katsina, Niger, doing their thing again. Now, there's focus on Niger State, covering across to Kaduna, Katsina. So, they are moving in the direction of Kebi. Is there a final solution to this? There can be. But the way the country is now, especially considering the fact that the equipment that our military will use to combat these bandits, they are not things you pick up the shelf. The personnel that we are going to deploy, we don't have enough. And then the resources so even buy the equipment and pay the personnel, we are struggling with. So while the government is trying to pacify lecturers, our university lecturers, please accept the little that we have. And trying to tell doctors, hold on for a while. We are also trying to see how we can meet your needs. There is also this yearning gap in our security um, structure and architecture. We've, it's, it's so um, saddening that we have gone to this level where bandits are having free reign. It's gone beyond just saying, it's the military, it's the military. Mm -hmm. What is the reality on ground? For a very long period, we did not fund our military the way we should have done. For a very long period, we did not fund the police the way we should have done, in terms of equipment and personnel. Now the president has approved recruits. They are recruiting. But you cannot just wake up one day and say we want to recruit 100,000 soldiers. You are going to make a mess of the military. Because you need to screen, you need to Absolutely. make provision for them and in terms of gadget, right, in terms of wares, in terms of this, concerns. all of them. Do so that they don't even out? turn out to be the security threats. Indeed. Indeed. All you right. know, so that we do not have the likes of the captain that at, um, took Wadume away in the force. It, it takes a huge process to achieve that. Okay. It takes a huge process. Legitimate concerns of, of, from your end, and when we talk about you know quick solutions or when we talk about uh, decisive solutions to this uh, uh, major security concerns, and as has been rightly noted, it's not just uh, Kebi. Yes, um, like uh, Dr. said, when there is um, 
heavy deployment of um, security operatives in a particular area to combat the activities of these uh, uh, bandits and uh, insurgents, they, they tend to shift base. There's a heavy military operation going on in Niger State now. And um, Niger has the largest uh, landmass yeah. in Nigeria. And where this happened, around the um, Sakaba area, uh, Sakaba local government area in uh, Kebi, uh, very close to uh, Zuru uh, Emirates, borders um, in, in, in um, Sanfara, borders um, Niger State. Uh, so, uh, so, no, sorry, in uh, Kebi, they, they share a border uh, with. Uh, so, those fleeing from the uh, uh, fire uh, of the military, military. Mm -hmm. from Niger, Niger escaping into the nearby Kebi. They are the ones that ambushed these vigilantes, I mean, uh, on Sunday and, and some uh, parts of uh, Monday. So they were feeling the heat. And I expect that, uh, I mean, while commending our military uh, for at least, you know, the, the, the spirit of uh, kidnappings uh, or in schools and uh, other banditry activities is actually going down. And even the menace by Boko Haram, I mean, has really gone down and I want to believe I want to uh, 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 pray that we sustain Absolutely. the momentum Indeed. but and the kind I mean this type of isolated uh, and localized uh, cases are things that are expected but where we should strategize against them so as not to demoralize the vigilantes who Absolutely. are actually mm -hmm. assisting the military and other as you heard, operatives to achieve uh, what they are achieving because they, they, these vigilantes, they are the ones that knows the nooks and crannies that gives, just like the uh, civilian JTF uh, in uh, Bono and other northeastern states that helps the military in um, uh, combating the activities of uh, Boko Haram and uh, Israel insurgents in those areas. So these vigilantes were actually ambushed by these uh, characters over the weekend and I mean it, it dealt a serious uh, uh, blow on right. the morale of uh, 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 this uh, local uh, vigilante groups who have been assisting. So I expect that uh, the military should ensure that while uh, combing Niger, we should not leave bare other uh, surrounding Indeed. states where these uh, infidels can uh, right. escape to and unleash uh, for that. Uh, right. Um, well, well th these are uh, well, we know great insights now, and you know lessons uh, that we should all uh, you know take home with us while we continue to encourage uh, the soldiers and um, all those supporting them, including the vigilantes, to continue to pray that they win this uh, uh, really huge war on on our hands. Mm -hmm. Indeed, uh, Mojit Jamu and uh, Dotu, uh, thank you so much, Dotu Oladipo. I thank you so much for your great thank insights you. on the program uh, today, and that's at seven on journalists hang out today you can watch the repeat broadcast of this episode tonight at 11 and join us also on sunday from 1 30 to 3 30 p.m for journalists hang out on sunday we're also on youtube at youtube.com forward slash tv news nigeria i am kemi fola adeyemo from all of us here thank you for watching bye for now and god bless nigeria <laughs>